Hello, this is Eric again. Today is January 25th, 2023. And in this video, we'll be addressing the first reign, the first reign of Dom Pedro I, this guy you're seeing then on, on your screen. And before we talk about his reign, we must remember that in our previous class, uh, we learned it that the elite... Uh, saw Dom Pedro I as their only alternative to consolidate the independence of Brazil, right? So Dom Pedro I initially played a major role in this process. And, uh, well, in the onset of his reign, you know, there was a kind of a, kind of a, a honeymoon, you know, between Dom Pedro I and the political uh, elite of the country. However, along the time, you know, things became really complicated for Dom Pedro I, and we are going to be analyzing here all the details involving this process, okay? Well, uh, so Dom Pedro I assumed as emperor in 1822 and yes abdicated in 1831 only nine years after becoming emperor right and we gotta first uh ask a very important question why a monarchy in brazil right yeah because if you think carefully about this you know all nations around brazil uh were becoming republics with the exception of Mexico, and that was for a short period of time. So why? Well, first, according to historians Lilia Schwartz and Eloisa Starling, the choice of monarchy over the republic happened for some reasons. First, the creators of our independence feared that the territory of Brazil would be fragmented if they established the republic in the country. And that was uh, a legitimate concern because uh, even uh, in the time of, you know, the independence, we had the northeastern uh, region of the country really, really showing dissatisfaction with the independence. So, uh, you know, they, what Brazil needed, you know, to, to consolidate the territory was a strong a figure, a strong political figure in the country. And so the monarchy uh, really appeared as the best alternative. Second, the Brazilian elite had been literate in the monarchist traditions of Portugal, right? And third, this form of government prevented transformations in the status quo from happening, right? They wanted to keep the status quo, the way things are supposed to be done and happen, right? Well, so we're going to see in the beginning of uh, Dom Pedro I's reign uh, a struggle, you know, to consolidate the independence, right? Uh, if you uh, go back to our previous class, you are going to see that Dom Pedro I had to resort to the help of uh, mercenaries, English mercenaries like Cochrane, to consolidate the independence. However, actually what they did was to establish the independence uh, by means of force, of strength, right? And this independence that took place should be consolidated. Right? And in order to consolidate this independence first, Brazil would need the recognition of the other nations, of the neighboring nations. Right? And this is something that was handled by the United States and England. Why? Because they were good? Because they loved us? No, certainly not. England had really, really high interests in Brazil, just like the United States had. Right? So they were like... Let's say they were sowing in order to reap in the future, right? We also needed a constitution. So since uh, 1823, uh, the work, you know, to write the constitution began, and it was marked 
by a strong friction between Dom Pedro I and the economic and political elites of Brazil. Why? Because Dom Pedro I wanted to become an absolutist, right, an authoritarian uh, emperor, while the political, um, the political elite was interested in greater individual freedoms and the limitation of real power, of royal power. Well, anyway, the Constitution was first drafted, uh, our first Constitution here in 1824, and it was nicknamed the Cassava Constitution. <laughs> it's a very funny name, and the reason for this name is that basically, um, it w basically was due to the fact that when it was instituted, we had the indirect census vote, in which voters had to prove a minimum quantity of bushels of cassava plantation according to their political position. So the higher they were in the hierarchy, in the political hierarchy, the more uh, cassava plantation they had to show. And well, thus the name Cassava Constitution. Well, this Cassava Constitution was really written considering more the interests of the political elite. As soon as Dom Pedro I uh, knew about you know, the, the liberal aspect of this constitution, he really um, didn't like it, right? And he actually, uh, you know, he acted on November 12, 1823, right? And, uh, you know, this event was uh, called the Night of Agony, right? Dom Pedro I ordered troops to surround and dissolve the National Constituent Assembly. On that day, also, several parliamentarians were arrested, so really, Dom Pedro first showed it that he wanted to be an, author, an authoritarian, right? And he then uh, demanded, you know, the, the, the new elaboration of this constitution. And this time, the new constitution was granted. It was imposed, right? And this constitution was really, really not popular. Right. Um, well, basically, the documented uh, reaffirmed that Brazil would be a monarchy and instituted absolute powers over the nation to the emperor. And there was even the moderator power uh, represented exclusively by Dom Pedro I. Right. So the imposition of the census vote was also determined in this constitution. So only those with annual incomes above a hundred thousand reais, the currency at the time, could vote. Right. Well, here you have a a painting of the night of agony. Right. And well, with all these things happening, you know, we had uh, the image of Dom Pedro I really worn before the society, right? Especially after the Constituent Assembly dissolution. So, as a result, we had basically the Confederation of Ecuador taking place. And what was it? It was a revolutionary movement initiated in Pernambuco. Yes, northeastern region in trouble again, right? So basically, uh, you know, uh, from Pernambuco, it is spread to other northeastern provinces such as Rio, Rio Grande do Norte, Paraíba, and Ceará, right? So the rebels opposed to the authoritarian form with which the Constitution of 1824 was drafted and published by Emperor Don Pedro I. Okay, so soon after the proclamation of the independence, we must remember that we had, uh, you know, that uprising in Pernambuco and that it was suffocated uh, by Don Pedro I, right? So now, with this new Constitution, and the way that Pedro I acted against, you know, the Constituent Assembly and uh, demanded a new uh, constitution, 
that, uh, as Pedro said at the time, would uh, could be worthy of Brazil and of him, we have this new constitution then with a really, really uh, authoritarian character, right? So really, this was not what the people wanted. And also, in this northeastern region, you must remember that since the Dutch left Brazil, right, uh, the northeastern area of the country never recovered financially sane, right? So, uh, you know, this was an area of the country that should be treated carefully, right? And even so, Pedro I insisted on being authoritarian. So we basically had uh, two leaders of this confederation of Ecuador. Uh, Frei uh, Caneca, right? And Frei, or, or Frei Joaquim do Amor Divino, right? His nickname was Frei Caneca. And basically, you know, he participated in both the confederation of Ecuador and in the Pernambuco Revolution in 1817. Right? And, well, he was a journalist, right? He was a religious man, but he was a journalist and he founded the, the newspaper Typhis Pernambuco, right? And through this new paper, he published the ideals of the uprisers, right? We also have Cipriano Barata. Let me show you the pictures of these two guys here. Yeah, so on your right, oh, sorry, on your left, you have Frei Caneca, and on your right, you have Cipriano Barata, right? Uh, Cipriano Barata was also a journalist and one of the leaders of the Confederation of Ecuador, right? And he collaborated in the, in the dissemination of the ideals of the Confederation of Ecuador, right? And basically, you know, he joined Frei Caneca, and both were arrested in Recife. However, uh, you know, as we can see there in the picture, Frei Caneca was executed. And Barata, on the other hand, was arrested and released in Recife um, in 1825, right? So what really they wanted, uh, what, you know, their claims were, you know, the economic and social crisis in the area that should be resolved, they were complaining about the high taxes and the authoritarianism of Dom Pedro I. You know, these were uh, the complaints, right? And basically, uh, well, yeah, uh, Frei Caneca was killed, and then Barata was, as I said, he was arrested and then released, right? However, you know, the Confederation of Ecuador was, again, suffocated by the emperor. Okay, then we had the Cisplatine War, and we must understand with all details what happened here with the Cisplatine War, okay? Uh, basically, uh, you know, if you remember the previous classes, you will see that the Cisplatina region, uh, currently Uruguay, was a place of tension and friction since the colonial period, right? Uh, the, Cisplatina, the dispute for Cisplatina was set by historians in 1680 when the Portuguese crown authorized the construction of a fort on the eastern bank of the Rio da Prata. Do you remember that? So that's exactly when Colonia del Sacramento was founded, right? Uh, but it was, you know, the, uh, the, the region of Colonia del Sacramento was founded against the Spanish uh, acceptance and authority, right? Well, because of that, Colonia del Sacramento was the subject of intense dispute between the Portuguese and the Spanish. Several territorial treaties were signed, like you know, the Treaty of El Pardo, the Treaty of Santo Ildefonso, but, you know, despite the treaties, the dispute and the uncertainty about the control of Sacramento remained during the 19th century. So when Don Juan VI transferred the Portuguese court to Brazil, um, you know, he got really mad because the Spaniards 
allowed the French troops to cross their territory and to invade Portugal. So, in, 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 as revenge, Don, Don Juan ordered the invasion of Sacramento and named the region Cisplatina. So, Cisplatina is the name given by Don Juan VI to the area known as Colonia del Sacramento. Okay? So, uh, there were two invasions of the Portuguese in the region. In 1816, Cisplatina was definitely invaded and aggregated into the territory of the Kingdom of Portugal, Brazil, and the Algarves. The, port, the Brazilian troops were led by Francisco Federico, right? And, uh, you know, the guy had almost 14,000 soldiers. So, basically, you know, they occupied... Uh, the region of Cisplatina, right? In 1822, Brazil declared its independence, okay? And the annexation of Cisplatina to Brazilian territory was confirmed. Uh, the region even sent representatives to the Constituent Assembly, right? And the tension didn't stop there. So basically, there was a rebellion in 1825 organized by a guy called Juan Antonio Lavajeja. In this rebellion, Lavajeja and his allies, known as the 33 Orientals, declared the separation of Cisplatina from Brazil and its connection with the United Provinces that was Argentina at the time. Okay? And, well, there were journalists covering you know, all this tension and all these conflicts involved in this area. And, well... Pedro I was already, you know, he had his image already worn in Brazil. And now we had journalist Libero Badaró, right, that even became, uh, you know, the name of an avenue here in Brazil, of a way. Uh, you know, this journalist was murdered, and the cause of his death was attributed to Dom Pedro I. So the image of Dom Pedro I was more and more worn, right? And also, you know, to make things worse, Brazil were facing, uh, sorry, Brazil was facing Portuguese interference in the political and economic fields in spite of the independence, right? So, uh, we had the Cisplatine War, right? Once the rebellion broke out in Cisplatine, the emperor's action was to intervene militarily to prevent the laws of the province. The rebellion was initiated in April 1825, and the actions taken by the emperor from that time on were understood by historians as hasty, right? So, um, he, Dom Pedro, for example, decreed on December, uh, in, in December 1825, uh, that the ships were prevented from moving to ports in the Platina region. Uh, Dom Pedro announced offering rewards for the capture of Lava, uh, Lava Jeja and Frutuoso Rivera, military allied to the rebellion. So, you know, basically Dom Pedro's first actions served only to aggravate the tempers in Cisplatin. So the whole thing, actually, uh, you know, there were three other battles uh, until 1827, and at last, Brazil had to yield, right? They had to recognize that they, that they lost the battle. Uh, it was really uh, a shameful loss, right? A shameful defeat. And, well, the defeat was hard for the Brazilian troops, uh, almost 1,200 Brazilians died in it. And then we had the negotiations to deal with the definite assignment of Cisplatine to the Uruguayans. And, well, basically what we had is that both Brazil and Argentina lost, you know, the war. Because uh, Argentina could not attach the region again, you know, to, to its country. And so we had the merge of the Republic of Uruguay, okay? Well, all of that added up was really, really, um, you know, causing Pedro I to have more and more headaches, right? So, when he got, uh, after, you know, uh, that uh, after the Republic of Uruguay was announced, 
Then we had a, a political polarization here in Brazil that was very strong. There were Portuguese here that would defend uh, that would defend Dom Pedro I. However, the Brazilians that were you know many more in number, they didn't like Dom Pedro I, and the political tension was so high, so high. You know the 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 uh, the image of Dom Pedro kept wearing down and down. So uh, we had the night of the bottles, right? And what was the, the night of the bottles? It was an uprising in Rio de Janeiro in 1831 between the Portuguese supporters of Dom Pedro and the Brazilians, right? And the Brazilians, obviously, as they were more uh, in number, right? They won the battle, right? And that only served, uh, you know, to the, the consequence really was the increased dissatisfaction of Brazilians with Dom Pedro I and the deepening of the crisis. And that all led him to abdicate, right? He could not endure, you know, all this tension. So on April 7th, 1831, the first emperor of Brazil abdicated. Right, so he abdicated to his son, Dom Pedro II. However, little Pedro was too young to become emperor. He was just a child. So what we are going to have uh, is a provisional government, right, formed by regents. And these provisional governments, actually three, they are going to assume the political power until uh, until Dom Pedro II might assume as the new emperor. But that's a topic for another class. I hope you have enjoyed this class. And if you have any questions, please uh, you know, send me the comments and I'll, and I'll gladly answer them, okay? Thank you so much and see you in our next video.